In this lab, we will perform a manual user migration for our database users. We will rationalize the Unix namespace, so that way there's no duplications moving forward. We will be performing this, all these actions from client one using, using Jesse's account, the Unix administrator. To do a user migration, the first thing I need is either a password file or a group file or a consolidated password file that has been cleaned up. For the purposes of this lab, we're just going to use a single file. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the password file from my CentOS system and put, copy it on my desktop. And uh, in order to do the migration, it's very simple. I've, I've actually cleaned up my zone. And all we need to do is go to the Unix data node. I'm going to go ahead and refresh so you can see there's no users. If I go to my actual system, in this case, it's going to be CentOS 1. Let's go ahead and make a connection here. Um, we can do a maybe flush so we can see there's nothing in here. And an AD query user. So there's no users coming from Active Directory, no Unix enabled users. So to do the migration is very simple. We can use the migration utility. We just right click the Unix data node, select import from Unix. And in this case, we're going to be using a configuration file. Notice where we can do a NIST migration from a network server or use a file collected from the deployment manager. So I want to pick the password file we just copied. And we have a lot of options here. We can include even the reserved accounts or truncate the usernames. But in this case, we're not going to use that. We're going to just do next. And we're going to pick store in Active Directory. This will give you a, a great utility. You'll check it out now. And in here, it retrieved eight users. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So the users that were retrieved, um, you know, some of them are not interested in those. So uh, I know Jeremy, Raymond, and Jesse. So let's go ahead and, and delete all this. So um, I'm going to go ahead and delete the ones that I'm not needing. So by default, it actually did not um, below 100. Here are my users. What at this point is do a check status. And what this check status does is that it picks the best candidate to do the actual migration from AD. In this particular case, it picked um, our user um, Raymond and in here, Jeremy, and you know all the others as well. You could actually create a new Active Directory account at this point. But with everything checked in, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna accept, and accept what it does. It takes it from this pending import state into the user's node. If I refresh the user's node, all my users are gonna show up. But since I have agreed that maybe in the future I'm gonna do some uh, uh, mergers and acquisitions, I want to have a very unique UID and GID. So at this point, this 503, 502 is not going to cut it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, edit the profile. I'm going to uncheck the things that I don't want, right? And uh, that way I can revisit that later and it's going to pick up what we defined as the zone defaults. It's a very simple uh, process. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, now check all the boxes again and you will see that the GID, um, uh, UID and home and shell is going to be picked up from what's defined in the zone defaults. This is still a manual um, uh, migration. I'll, I'll cover automatic migrations later but it is much better to understand where things come from. So at this point all my users have their respective accounts or Unix profiles. Um, all we need to do is give them roles and to give them roles all you need to do is add them to the uh, corresponding AD group and I know that um, you know in the case of Jesse he's a Unix super users he happens to be there already 
in the case of Raymond, I know that he's a Unix database. Um, he's a Unix database server user. And uh, in this case too, because our CentOS system is a database system. So I've added all my users, uh, I've given them roles, and uh, let's take a look at, uh, just do an AD flush, well let's do an AD query. We know that's not going to show up right away because the flush interval hasn't hit yet. So let's do an AD flush, and now if I do an AD query user, I have my three users here. But users still have a local identity. We need to make sure that we get rid of that and also that we deal with the problem with the home directory. If I do, uh, you will see that, you know, home directories won't be able to be navigated, uh, uh, don't belong to the right user. So for that, we have the AD fix ID uh, utility and we can use it in commit mode. So it would be, uh, I have to elevate. And it will be with a commit. I'm going to do a verbose and let's do it at slash home. So what it does, it goes through all the file systems that I would specify and is going to make all the changes required. So now when I look at this, this all is going to belong to the right people. So now it changed all the, uh, all the ownerships for all the files and folders. Now that I've done this, all I need to do is remove the users from the local IT password file. And I have another utility that does that, and it's called the ADRM local utility. With commit option uh, and verbose. So in here it's asking me, do you want to delete J Silva? Yes. RG Menace? Yes. J Matthews? Yes. And now we have a clean system. So if we do a get tent, for password and do a grep, in this case, just Silva, we only have one identity. And if even if we cat the Etsy password file, he doesn't exist. So um, to take it for a ride, all we need to do is just use any user. Let's use uh, Jesse. See that, that, that's the ID, and uh, I'm in the right user directory, and uh, I have all ownership for all my files. There you go, and that's a manual user migration, um, using the migration utility, AD uh, fix ID, and AD RM local. Thank you.